Hey everyone, it is Ryan here with Sailing Viridian. If you've been following our previous videos, you'll know that Sydney and I are back in the market for a new sailboat. Two videos ago, we looked on Craigslist for sailboats within our budget and our size constraints uh, up in the Annapolis area, um, which if you've been watching some of my earlier videos, I was actually down at Lake Lanier uh, outside of Atlanta. Uh, but I've since moved up north for a new job um, and to be closer with Sydney since she grew up in the Baltimore area. So uh, in that video where we looked at boats on Craigslist, uh, you might have noticed that we mentioned our price range was about $40,000 um, and we were looking for something that was at least kind of in the 1985-ish range um, or more recent. Uh, the good news is, is that uh, $40,000 uh, limit has actually gone up a little bit um, thanks to uh, my father who graciously offered to loan me uh, about an additional $20,000 in cash, um, which I will be paying him back over uh, the next year or two, uh, interest-free, I, I may add, which is great. Um, so our, our uh, price range kind of went up to about $60,000. Um, and if you watch the most recent video, we looked at a uh, 1994 uh, Benetu 35, uh, and that one was listed at 25,000, but did need a decent amount of work on the keel bolts um, as well as the engine. Um, so uh, since then, uh, we've been looking online for uh, additional boats that kind of meet our new budget and our um, time constraints or excuse me, our, uh, our boat size constraints. Um, and what we did was we came across this really, really nice condition, um, 1998 Hunter 376. Um, and you'll see it was listed at 59,000, uh, which was kind of right at the uh, very top of our price range there. Um, You'll also notice if you look up at, towards that price range that you'll see this red banner here that says sale pending. Um, so this boat, uh, I've actually gone ahead and put in an offer on. Um, and as with the previous video, I'm recording this slightly out of chronological order. Um, I've actually already gone and checked out the boat in person. Um, and I'm now recording this voiceover kind of after the fact. Since same with last video, everything happened kind of fast. Wasn't able to put together this voice recording prior to me actually seeing the boat. Um, so it's, lo it's uh, located in Drayden, Maryland, uh, which is about 70 nautical miles south of Annapolis. Um, so we would have to relocate the boat up to Annapolis. Um, and you'll also notice that it's a 37-footer, uh, which is about two feet longer than the previous uh, Bonetu 35 that we looked at. Um, additionally, this boat is in much, much better condition than the Benadu 35 that we looked at. Um, and as I mentioned, that Benadu 35 was a great fixer-upper. I think it was priced reasonably um, for someone who has the time and the um, potentially the money to, to put into fixing it up. Uh, it probably cost another 10000 to make it seaworthy, and you'd end up with a pretty solid you know, 1994 35-footer. Um, for only about $35,000, maybe $40,000. But uh, since Sydney and I are, are super busy, um, I've been very busy with work, and, and so, so has she, um, we were looking for something a little bit more turnkey, which is kind of why we came across this boat. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of go through some of the photos of the boat first, and then we'll jump into the actual video that I shot of the boat in person. Um, Please note that the video that I shot in person, I'll be recording the voiceover kind of after the fact. Um, since I was with the broker, uh, Ben Woodall here, here um, great, you know, great, great broker. Um, you know, I recommend uh, reaching out to him if you're ever in the Annapolis area or, or Maryland area looking for a boat. Um, you know, I didn't want to take up his time, you know, with with an hour or two of me walking around the boat filming while I while I talk. So um, I kind of just took some quick videos while I was there. And then, of course, I'll be recording the voiceover um, as a part of this video after we look at the photos. Um, but you'll see, you know, right off the bat, uh, it looks pretty solid from an exterior point of view. Uh, the boat's name is Leah Marie. 
and as we kind of go through these photos I think you'll see that the boat is in absolutely fantastic condition um, it has I want to say and I, I recorded it in the video I think it has like 450 hours on the engine um, which is phenomenal for a boat that's you know a little over 20 years old um, that's what about 20 hours a year that the engine was used so very very minimal use on the engine and I think in general the boat was minimally used but kept in fantastic condition um, because you see a lot of those boats that of course you know are minimally used but they just sit in the water and no one ever takes care of them um, this boat on the other hand um, has has really had someone who has uh, cared for it over the years so uh, if you look at the exterior the the mainsail and the uh, jib are currently stowed in the boat um, since it has been on the hard for at least I want to say six to eight months um, so they, they took the the sails down just to ensure that you know there wasn't any wear and tear um, as the boat was on the hard um, so kind of going through exterior you know you can see relatively good condition um, and then here we start to actually get up onto the boat and um, look at some of the you know the photos here so it does have those nice dinghy davits which is nice um, and hopefully I'm not repeating too much of what I'll be showing later on in the video um, but I wanted to show it you know listing photos first and then video as well um, it has a bunch of custom uh, seat cushions that were purchased for the boat uh, exterior seat cushions um, let's go ahead and continue on here um, here's kind of the view from the the bow looking back um, the rigging is a little bit, you know, old since, like I said, it seems to ha have not been used too much. Um, so I'll most likely be replacing the rigging, um, assuming that, you know, everything goes well, um, with the, t the, uh, sea trial and the, uh, marine survey, um, which I actually did forget to mention. Um, we have the, uh, sea trial and, uh, marine survey scheduled for October 20th, um, so depending on when this video is released, it m it'll probably be somewhere around that date, um, at which point we'll have a better feel for whether or not we're going to move forward with the purchase. Um, but so far, based off of everything I saw with the boat, it seems like it's in fantastic condition, um, and I don't envision anything major arising during the inspection. But, you know, with that said, you never know. Uh, here's a look at the interior. Um, very, very spacious interior. Cushions are in great shape. Um, the the floor is in great shape. You know, really no 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 really wear and tear at all. Um, I also looked down into the bilge, which was under some of these floor panels. Bilge looked fantastic, nice and clean. Um, no major issues I saw there. A quick look at the kitchen. I like how it's got that integrated microwave. Um, it has a fridge and freezer, which is super nice. Um, full AC and heating system built in, as well as water heater, um, as well. So I mean, it's a it's a pretty turnkey boat, kind of ready to go. And it seemed like it was relatively specked out um, when it was first manufactured back in '98. Um, since the the AC uh, option was um, optional, <laughs> and hence it being an option, um, and it does have the AC. Uh, built in. Here's just another look at the main cabin there. The nice thing is is that this table um, actually raises and lowers so you can turn this into a, a large style kind of lounge bed um, and it also the table swivels around so uh, it, you know if for whatever reason you wanted to orient it so that it's rotated and facing the other direction you could do that as well. Here's a look at one of the other Kind of just you know bench seating there seating areas next to the uh, main table there that's the aft cabin um, which actually you can stand up completely where this photo was taken um, i'm relatively short i'm i'm five seven uh, and my girlfriend sydney i want to say she's five four uh, so we definitely won't have any issues with uh with the ceiling in here very large area to sleep in which is nice um, since Sydney of course does like to roll around and take up three quarters of the mattress <laughs> here's a look kind of from that aft cabin area um, looking forward there 
Here's the V-Birth. Uh, it's, it's relatively small um, compared to some V-Births I've seen, but I think it kind of, uh, the, the larger aft cabin sacrifices a little bit of the space in the V-Birth. The interesting thing is you'll see here on the right, there's actually a sink there, um, which is kind of interesting for a V-Birth. Uh, there is no head in the V-Birth, just a sink. Um, which is, I don't know, in my mind, kind of strange. <laughs> but uh, hey, I guess if you if you're thirsty at night, you just roll over and you got the sink right there. Yeah, there's another look at that sink. Um, I don't know, kind of kind of interesting, but to each their own. Here's a look at the um, the uh, main head here. So you've got the the actual head itself, nice sink, um, and then this is kind of like your your shower head that you can, I believe, extend off of that. Um, the nice thing is that these countertops are kind of that, like, there's, there's some trademark name for it, but I want to say it's like some sort of like concrete composite or something like that. Um, so they are, you know, hard and you knock on them and they sound like stone. I don't think that they're actual stone, like, you know, taken out of the earth. I think they're manufactured, but they are uh, very durable and, um, you know, are pretty hard, solid surface, which is nice. Uh, huge mirror, which Sydney of course likes. Um, and then this is kind of, this is kind of what really sold me on the boat is, is this, the, uh, overall quality and care that this engine has seen throughout its life. Um, I mean, this thing is pristine you could, you could literally eat off of it. <laughs> and, um, you know, I saw this photo and I was like, wow, that thing looks nice. And, uh, it was just as nice in person as well. Um, you know, everything's very, um, tucked away and organized no rust or corrosion at all on any part of the engine. It's super accessible, um, which if I, I don't think it'll be shown here. Yeah, we go back outside. Um, but the engine's actually located directly under the steps that take you down into the main cabin or up to the cockpit. And uh, those steps are enclosed in kind of like a, a, a fiberglass um, dome, if you want to call it that. Uh, excuse me, the engine is encased in that fiberglass dome and the steps are on that fiberglass dome. Um, and you'll notice here on the left, there's actually a one of those kind of like hydraulic jacks or air jacks. Um, and all you do is literally just like lift up the steps, you know, unhit, uh, um, un unlatch it and lift up those steps slightly. And the entire fiberglass dome that the steps rest on pretty much comes up on its own due to this um, this jack here which is really nice. And you have complete access to the entire engine. Um, and if you look here towards the back, this is actually the aft cabin. Um, and you can take this panel off, which uh, you'll see the, the reflective um, heat and soundproofing material there. You can take that rear panel off. Um, it just has two little latches you pop off and you have complete access to the entire rear of the engine. Um, so you pretty much have, I mean, I'm talking 300, and 60 almost degrees of access. Um, you don't have the best access over here on the right part of the engine, um, but even so, it is a couple inches off of this uh, wall here. So, I mean, you can pretty much access the entire thing, um, which is great. So any sort of engine maintenance that I have to do, piece of cake, you literally just pop this fiberglass dome up, it lifts itself up off the ground, and then you pop that rear panel off the back and you pretty much have complete unfettered access to the entire engine. Um, and like I said, you know, it's, it's in great shape, very low hours. It's about 450 hours or so. Um, yeah, and overall just, I mean, looks fantastic. Here's just, uh, I think one or two final photos of the hull. Uh, you'll notice it, it probably does need a sanding in its uh, near future. You can see some, you know, kind of chips and, and larger pieces there of, of paint. Um, but, I mean, that's really the only issue that, that I saw with the boat, and that's pretty minimal in my mind. Um, here's kind of just a bird's eye view as well of the floor plan. You can see the aft cabin here. Um, this is where the engine's located, um, and this is kind of that fiberglass dome with the steps on it that I was just talking about that lifts up and kind of um, comes out this way a little bit and then lifts up um, and you get you know that full access I mentioned um, and here's that rear panel here where you take that rear panel off um, and you can access the engine 
Um, and the reason I'm talking about the engine so much is I actually didn't film it while I was there. I took some some just static photos, um, but it was um, me and the uh, broker were trying to figure out how to get it up. <laughs> and once we got it up, it was it was very easy. It was just figuring out where those latches were. Um, but I didn't have time to break out the camera while I had it open. Um, you'll also see there's there's actually a seat in the uh, aft cabin here, which I thought was kind of interesting. Don't know if Sid and I will be using that. Um, you know, we might take that out and maybe add some additional closet or storage space. Um, and you can kind of see here the the size of the V berth versus the aft cabin, um, and even even versus this kind of wraparound seating area, uh, you'd have much more room sleeping here than you would in the V berth. But you know, V berth still works if uh, if it just potentially you know one person or, or two small people. <laughs> um, and you have nice that nice closet and that sink like I mentioned. So, um, yeah, so that's a, that's kind of a walkthrough of the boat. Um, you know, what you, what, what I saw online before I even got there in person. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and look at some of the video footage uh, that I recorded while I was there in person. So here's some video footage of me on the actual boat. Uh, just a quick look at the back at some of those dinghy Davids and the Bimini, um, kind of piping. Uh, here's also a look at some of the electronics uh, at the helm. A couple of different, um, that's the autopilot there, and then also a couple of different, you know, just standard instrument panels. There wasn't a GPS plotter that I saw, um, but I also didn't look very hard in the cabin, you know, in case they took it down because they were worried about theft. There's a look towards the bow. Uh, like I mentioned, the sails are, are put away in storage in the boat right now. Look up towards the mast. Um, apologies if the video is kind of fast because, as I said, I kind of recorded this quickly while I was with the broker. Um, boat needs a little bit of a scrubbing, but of course, you know, what boat doesn't? Um, here I start walking up towards the bow and I'm just checking out um, some of the uh, rigging um, as well as the um, uh, pulley there for the jib. Uh, here's a look at some of the standing rigging, you know, just checking, making sure everything's relatively sturdy and, and well connected um, like I mentioned some of the lines there are a little bit uh, frayed so you can see that um, they have you know some 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 pieces coming off on them so they're probably a little rough on the hands but apart from that they're definitely still in usable condition but I probably would replace them um, within the next you know year or so as I'm as I'm using the boat look back there towards the aft part of the boat and then coming up to the front here uh, the video kind of does pause since I was trying to get this locker open um, but this is where the uh, anchor is stored or potentially also the um, chain or line for the anchor itself here's a look at a couple of the spots where it looked like there was some fiberglass work done on the boat. Um, this looks like something was mounted there because there's kind of four distinct pieces where it looks like there were maybe some some holes through for mounting something. Um, here's a look up towards some of the cowls and the solar panel there. So here's another piece of potential work, fiberglass work that was done on the boat. Um, and this video is super short, only four seconds. Um, you know, like I said, I was I was really just getting the video for my myself rather than focusing on it for the YouTube channel, just to make sure I had everything recorded for my review after the fact. Um, but I'm not really sure what was what happened here. Um, it looks like some kind of patchwork was done, a little bit of cracks here and there. Um, it doesn't look too serious, but still, I'll have the marine surveyor take a look. And just verify that between this and those other kind of um, four holes that were patched up um, aren't anything of concern. The nice thing about this boat is that all of the lines lead directly to the cockpit, which is going to be a major, major upgrade from my Catalina 27, uh, which I was always scampering around on the deck to try to raise the sails. Um, so here's a look at some of those lines. Like I said, a little bit old. Um, and then some of the winches and then also the rear of the boat there as well. The electrical system on this boat is pretty complete and as with the previous snapshot I'm going to pause this video as well since it's only a five second clip. Um, but the nice thing is that this boat has two 210 amp hour 12 volt lead acid batteries already in it um, which is an ample amount of power 
um, at least for you know kind of your basic liveaboard amenities. It also has in the beginning of this clip I showed the battery charger. Um, it's a Xantrex battery charger, um, and you know part of Sydney and I's plan with this boat is to install some solar panels on uh, the boat itself. Um, if you watch some of my previous videos, you'll know that I'm an electrical engineer, um, so I have a pretty good knowledge of wiring and uh, setting up, you know, electronics and charge controllers, all that. Um, so we're we're gonna kind of spec this uh, boat out um, pretty heavily on the electronics side, um, since I'm kind of a little, you know, tech fanatic and all that. Um, so it is it is really good to see a, a large battery bank already pre-existing in this boat. Um, this is much larger than the 100 amp hours I had on my Catalina 27, um, but we'll just have to make sure that the 440-ish or 420-ish amp hours is enough for us. Um, and if not, you know, we'll just pop another uh, 210, 220 amp hour battery in there um, and kind of add it into the array. So if I pause this video right at the beginning here, what you'll see is that kind of fiberglass motor enclosure with the steps going up to the helm. So this is that area that I had mentioned earlier on where the engine is stored. Uh, and like I said, this entire fiberglass piece here raises up and uh, is supported by that air jack as well as a clip that holds it just in case that jack fails. Um, and that provides full accessibility to the engine. Continuing on with the video, there's the steps on the upper portion. Here's a look at the galley. So it has that same countertop that I'd mentioned earlier on. Nice little shelf system there. Um, ample storage and cabinet space. Two large deep sinks. Uh, here's a look at either the fridge or the freezer. And it has those same air jacks which lift it up, which is very nice. It's really easy to lift up. Uh, and same there. I believe that's the fridge and the other one's the freezer, if I had to guess. <laughs> um, there's the stove, uh, you know, fully gimbaled, of course. Got the handrail there in front. A uh, nice cutting board on top, custom for the shape of the stove. Um, comes with all the pots and pans and plates and all those standard goodies. Um, fire extinguisher, and then, of course, the look back here into the aft cabin. So you can see there is some water dripping, so I'll probably have to inspect that. Um, but there's a look at that really big uh, aft cabin uh, bed. A little closet there with, you know, same thing you'd see on a boat, just a bunch of random parts. <laughs> Who knows what I'll find uh, in there if, if we end up moving forward with the purchase. Um, and there's just a, a full look back. Um, and that bubble coming down below from the ceiling is actually where you stand at the helm. Um, that's that panel for the rear part of the engine. Uh, there's me. <laughs> in the mirror there uh, and you can see decent ample headroom there's that seat that I was talking about that we might remove and uh, add some more storage for um, other little closet there potentially that looks like a wet locker a drain at the bottom um, now this 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 boat actually has its own dedicated door into the uh, bathroom from the aft cabin which is nice um, there's the head sink Sid's mirror <laughs> the shower, uh, some life jackets, uh, interesting place to store them. Um, so now back out into the main cabin. Um, sorry, I'm going so fast. Uh, there's the DC and AC panel, um, some additional storage, that main one seating bench, um, as well as the wraparound seating area. Um, and then a look back towards the galley from kind of the center of the boat there. Lots of natural lighting, as you can see, all of the shades. Um, oh, there's some ceiling lights, uh, ceiling vents. Um, everything's molded into the ceiling, which is really nice. If you'll notice in the video, there's also speakers molded into the ceiling, um, which is kind of cool. Here's the V-berth. Like I said, a little bit small. Here's that kind of strange sink, in my opinion. Um, some uh, heating and AC vents, um, as well as a small little... Um, uh, locker or closet there um, for whoever is using the V-berth. Um, some extra cushions and, and stuff like that. Um, here I'm looking down into the uh, parts of the bilge. There's some of the through holes there. Um, and then I uh, this um, uh, portion here on the right, uh, that's some of the sail. Um, and I had checked previously down into the um, location under there. 
Um, there's the bilge. I think that's the number for the Coast Guard registration. Not too sure to tell you the truth. I don't know a whole lot about that. Um, I just happened to see that as I was crawling around. It looks like a radio or something. Um, and here's there's one of those speakers back there molded up into the ceiling, which is nice. I might replace them depending on the quality of the audio. Table's in fantastic condition. I mean, look at the shine coming off of that. Um, all of the stainless steel, same thing, fantastic condition. Floor's in fantastic condition. Um, here's a look under there. You can see some vents there, potentially for the, um, for the HVAC. So here's a look at the hull from the exterior. You'll notice that probably does need a little bit of a sanding, like I'd mentioned earlier. Um, you can see some of the kind of the ridges and the bumps um, in the paint there. Uh, has been freshly painted. Um, that's part of the um, sale. It includes that fresh bottom paint. Um, look at some of the through holes there. They look to be in good condition, um, as with the rest of the boat. Here's a look up towards the um, front where the anchor is. Um, and then a look around on the other side, um, kind of coming down. Here's a look up towards the mast. You notice that little kind of three-pronged electrical looking component halfway up the mast. Still have no idea what that is. Uh, doesn't look like anything AIS related. Um, so the, the broker is going to check with the owner as to what that device is. There's the prop. Prop looks great. Same with the prop shaft. And then one click, quick look at the rudder there as well, um, which looks to be in really good condition. That was an absolute whirlwind of voiceovers for those videos of the actual boat. Apologies for it being so rushed. Um, I, like I said, I recorded those videos and wasn't really thinking about the time it would take to provide an accurate voiceover. Um, so I'm sure you all are a little bit dizzy, as am I, <laughs> for having to speak that fast. Um, but as you can see kind of throughout the boat, boat is in fantastic condition. Um, I'm really hoping that the marine survey comes back favorable um, in the next couple of days. Um, I'm actually recording this voiceover on October 16th. Um, so we're about four days out from that marine survey, um, as well as sea trial, um, which is on October 20th, uh, which is a Tuesday. Um, so Sid and I both took off work for it. Um, not sure if I'm going to film the actual sea trial since I really want to focus on um, learning how to sail the boat since this is a brand new um, boat to me with a lot of additional features and lines um, as well as size that I'm not uh, too familiar with um, since my Catalina 27 was much smaller and um, you know didn't have any reef lines, didn't even have a jib. Um, if you all remember from my previous videos. Um, so I still have yet to actually sail with a jib, um, which is going to be kind of a brand new learning experience for me. So it's a lot for me to take in, and I, I think I'd rather focus on actually learning that um, than, you know, trying to trying to get it videoed. Um, and, and Sid as well, you know, she would rather focus on learning since we're both going to be sailing it. Um, assuming that everything works out with the uh, sea trial, uh, we'll probably have it, um, I, you know, I have the cash ready to go. Um, we'll probably have it, you know, in our hands by the end of uh, that week. So, like I said, October 20th is a Tuesday. Um, I would basically just wire the money to an escrow, um, and they would have it kind of ready to go um, for, you know, probably a day or two after that. The boat does come with a uh, prepaid slip through December. Um, that slip is located down in Drayton, Maryland. So it is a little bit of a hike for us. Um, it's, it's about a two hour drive. And like I said, we're, we're planning to take it up to Annapolis, um, which would involve about a 70 nautical mile sail. Um, so for us, you know, depending on wind speed and everything, we probably will break that into two days with a, um, a staying a night either at an anchorage that we find along the route up the Chesapeake or potentially at a transient slip in a marina, um, since also we have yet to anchor <laughs> a boat, uh, since Lake Lanier is a man-made lake, um, you know, created from damming up a river, and the average uh, depth at the marina I kept my boat at at Lake Lanier was over 90 feet deep. 
Um, so there was pretty much nowhere on Lake Lanier that you could anchor since the uh, lake, pretty much throughout the entire lake, you're looking at 100 plus feet of depth. And as you get close to shore, um, the depth rises super, super fast. Um, so there really isn't anywhere to anchor at Lake Lanier. So anchoring is going to be new to us. Not sure if we're going to try that out <laughs> as we're also already planning to sail those potentially 70-ish nautical miles up to Annapolis. So um, we, we, we still have to plan that out and figure out what we're going to do. Um, we are giving ourselves some time to, of course, get ready with the boat, make sure everything's um, safe and we have everything required from a legal perspective, you know, fire extinguishers, uh, distress signals, etc., all of that. Um, and then we will take some time to practice sailing it down near that marina that it's currently stored at. Um, we are targeting to sail it up to Annapolis um, in the early November time frame, um, early to mid-November. Um, so uh, the, the reason it's rushed is because Sydney has a, a surgery coming up and um, she won't be able to help me sail it after that surgery for a bit. And at that point, it'll be, you know, deep into winter. So it, it might seem a little bit rushed, uh, and it is, um, because we'd really like to get it up to Annapolis before things start to potentially freeze. Um, because by the time she's okay after her surgery, it'll probably be well into winter, um, at which point we wouldn't want to do any sort of long distance sailing, um, you know, due to the potential risk of ice as well as the, the cold weather. Um, so that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, as you can see from the video, fantastic, beautiful boat. Um, I think relatively uh, priced well. Um, I was able to negotiate the seller down to actually 57. Um, so I have put a 10% deposit down and then the rest will be due after that sea trial on October 20th, assuming that the sea trial is favorable and the survey comes back favorable as well. Um, so with that being said, fingers crossed that uh, this boat is the next one uh, for Sydney and I. Um, you know, we're, we're really, really excited about it. Um, she actually wasn't able to see it in person, but I did show her all the videos. Her first in-person look at the boat is going to be during that sea trial on the 20th. Um, but I think she's going to be really, really pleased with it. Um, and she already is based off of the videos that um, I showed her. Um, so, yeah, I mean, fingers crossed that this is this is the boat for us. Um, and if it is, you'll probably be hearing an update <laughs> from us uh, sometime next week um, describing how the sea trial and survey went, um, as well as our next steps. So thanks again to everyone who tunes in and watches our videos. Uh, it really means a lot. Um, and hopefully we'll have some good news for you in the next week or so. Thanks.